Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at a very nice antiderivative problem, which is not something I normally do here on the channel. You'll mostly see me solving those definite integrals and those really cool looking monster ones. And the only antiderivatives we ever encounter are pretty much the ones that we encounter while solving differential equations. But this one is actually pretty cool, which is why I wanted to make a video on it. So we have the integral of dx divided by square root sine cube x plus sine to the fourth power of x. And the first thing it looks like we could do is factor out the sine cube x from the argument of the square root in the denominator. So we have integral dx divided by root sine cube x times 1 plus sine x. And this gives us the integral of dx divided by sine to the 3 halves of x times root 1 plus sine x. And this is where the double angle formula come in really handy. We'll expand both of these sine functions. So sine x would be uh, twice of sine x by 2 times cosine x by 2, meaning we have integral dx divided by 2 to the 3 halves of sine of 3 halves of x by 2 times cosine to the 3 halves of x by 2. And the same thing for the other function that is 1 plus 2 sine x by 2 times cosine, terribly sorry about that, cosine of x by 2. Okay, cool. So the first thing I'd like to do is take this 2, two to the 3 halves term outside. So we have 1 by 2 to the 3 halves, obvious integral of, I'd also like to turn this cosine into a secant because we have 1 over cosine, so that equals secant. So we have secant to the 3 halves of x by 2, dx up in the numerator. And the reason for that is, well, you guys know how much I love secant functions while dealing with trig integrals. How is that useful in this context? We'll get to that in a little bit. So we're left with sine to the 3 halves of x by 2, times root 1 plus 2 sine x by 2 times cosine x by 2. But what on earth do we plan to do with this expression in the square root? Well, we have 1 plus twice a cross term in sine and cosine. And the number 1 is actually very, very useful in dealing with trig functions because we know that 1 equals sine squared plus cosine squared. So that means we could write this as the square root of sine square x by 2 plus cosine square x by 2 plus 2 sine x by 2 times cosine x by 2, which is very cool indeed, because now we just have the square root of sine x by 2 plus cosine x by 2 whole thing squared. Okay, cool. So this implies that the target integral i equals 1 by 2 to the 3 halves integral secant to the 3 halves of x by 2 divided by we had sine to the 3 halves of x by 2 now being multiplied by this sine of x by 2 plus cosine of x by 2 dx. And like I said, I really like secants and I also like tangents when dealing with these kind of integrals. So we might as well factor out a cosine x by 2 term and introduce a tangent. So we have 1 by 2 to the 3 halves of the integral of secant to the 3 halves of x by 2 dx divided by sine to the 3 halves of x by 2 times cosine x by 2 times now we have the tangent of x by 2 plus 1. Okay, cool, but again, now what? That's the real question. Well, take note of the fact that again we have a cosine term, so we might as well write it in the numerator as a secant. So we would have 1 by 2 to the 3 halves integral secant to the 5 halves of x by 2 divided by sine to the 3 halves of x by 2 times the tangent of x by 2, which is quite nice. I mean, this seems good, but it would have been nice to have a secant square term 
And we do technically have that because five halves is just 2.5. So I might as well borrow a secant square from here. So I have secant to the one half of x by two left times secant square x by two. And now for a nice little substitution. We're gonna let the tangent of x by two equal t, and this implies the one half of secant square x by two dx equals dt. In other words, this whole thing equals two times dt, which is quite convenient. That's a very nice looking differential element. But what about the secant and the sine terms? Well, that's not difficult. If I just craft a right angle triangle with the acute angle here being x by two, uh, t here, one here, that means the hypotenuse is root one plus t squared. So the sine of x by two is in fact t divided by root one plus t squared. And what about the secant? Well, the secant would just be the reciprocal of the cosine. So we have secant x by two equal to root one plus t squared. Okay, cool. Let me just copy this down so I can transform everything. Oh, dear me, that's what I have to copy and paste to the description box at the end of, well, uploading each video. Wow, it stays on my clipboard for quite a long while. I mean, I copied that this morning while editing a description box. Oh, that's convenient. Anyway, so what exactly was I about to do? I forgot. Yes, I'm supposed to copy this thing. So I'll copy it. Immaculately. And I'll just paste it down here. And I'm interested in, well, I know the tangent is my t, and I know the secant square and the dx go to become dt, two times dt, that is. And this is, of course, equal to i, so we have one by two to the three halves times a factor of two, which is quite nice because that means I have one by root two outside. Integral of, we have secant, the square root of the secant function, which is of course gonna be root one, root root one plus t squared. Then we have dt here. And what about the sine function? Well, the sine function here, we have hmm, t to the three halves times what exactly is this? This is going to be 1 plus t squared to the 3 halves. No, oh, wait, it's a square root, so that's 3 quarters. And this thing, of course, can be written as 1 plus t squared to the 1 quarter. And then we have t plus 1 going here. Okay, cool. So obviously, we should expand by 1 plus t squared to the three quarters. So I'll just write that over here. One plus t squared. Might as well highlight it. So we have one plus t squared to the three quarters. Uh, and here we have again one plus t squared to the three quarters dt. Some lovely cancellation taking place here. And upstairs we have a quarter plus three quarters, which equals one. Oh, that's very nice. One by root two. Integral 1 plus t squared divided by t to the 3 halves times 1 plus t dt. And this is a very simple integral for us to tackle, correct? Now take notice of the fact that we have 1 plus t in the denominator and we only have 1 plus t squared up top. And it would be nice if that was a 1 plus t or a power of something like that, which we can convert it into without much difficulty. In fact, we have one plus t squared plus two times t minus two times t. It's the old flammable maths trick of, you know, you have one apple, then you take it away, then you have no apples. So this thing over here is in fact one plus t whole thing squared. So we have one by root two integral one plus t whole thing squared divided by t to the three halves times one plus t minus two t divided by one plus t times t to the three halves dt. So we have cancellations taking place in both integrals. First up, we lose a term down here, leading to one 
by root 2 times the integral of 1 by t to the, uh, wait, it's 1 plus t divided by the whole thing. So it's 1 by t to the 3 halves plus 1 by t to the 1 half. Am I right? Yep, my basic arithmetic skills are, well, they're, they're holding on so far. But the better I get at advanced math, the worse I've become at basic math. I made a community post about that earlier in the day. And also we have some cancellation here. So we have minus 2 times, again, t to the 1 half. So that's just root t times 1 plus t integration with respect to t. Now, of course, using the linearity of the integration operator, we can expand this. So we have 1 by root 2 times a couple of very simple antiderivatives. In the first case, we have negative 3 halves plus 1 is supposed to be negative 1 half, right? So I have negative 2 divided by root t. And plus sign here, 2 times root t. Yeah, that sounds about right. And then a minus 2 divided by root 2 times the integral of dt divided by root t times 1 plus t, which is actually pretty simple. That's quite easy to evaluate. Let me just pick a different color first. So here, we let root t equal u, and this implies the 1 by 2 root t dt equals du. So we do need an extra factor of 2 here, so we'll turn this thing into a 4. And by that token, we have the integral of du divided by 1 plus u squared, which is, of course, r tan u. So we have r tan u here, and u is, of course, just root t. So we have r tan root t. And now back to the actual integral we were solving. So this implies that the target integral i equals 1 by root 2 times we can factor out 2, right? So we have 2 divided by root 2, which is root 2. So we have root 2 times negative 1 by root t. And what exactly was the t variable? t was tangent of x by 2. So we have root 1 by tangent x by 2, which we recognize immediately as root cotangent x by 2. So that's quite nice. Plus we have the root of tangent x by 2, and then we have this minus 4 divided by root 2. A friend of mine gets very, very uncomfortable whenever she sees root 2 in the, or any irrational number in the denominator, so I might as well fix it up just a little bit. 4 is 2 times 2, 2 divided by root 2 is root 2, so that means we have 2 times root 2. Then that was hard. So we have the inverse tangent of root tangent x by 2, plus the constant of integration c. Remember, this was an antiderivative problem. And now, we of course have to verify that differentiating the whole thing gives us back the initial structure. So for that, Zenaid Parker will do so in the comment section as a special bit of homework for him. And so far, so good. This was actually pretty cool. This was a nice antiderivative problem. Feels good to do these for a change once in a while when I find something cool like this. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. And more importantly, I hope you learned something from the video. Drop me a follow on Instagram and you can support the channel on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.